Hey everybody, Paul at Inside PA Training. I want to do a little video for you to show you how to repair your stethoscope when you need to replace the diaphragm. Um, it's a pretty easy fix. It'll bring new life to a pretty expensive piece of equipment and um, definitely worth doing. Now in a previous video, I did show you how to determine if you need to replace it. I'll show you again one more time. All you do is you cover one of the stethoscope ear tips and you blow gently into the other one and you'll see if this diaphragm moves up and down. You can see that this one does. Um, if this diaphragm needed replacement, you'd either see a crack or a split across the diaphragm or when you do this test, you'll hear a hissing and you'll even, you can even feel a little bit of air come out of the side. If it's not making a good seal, it's not going to make good sound for you. So that's how you know. So today I'm, I have two Littman Cardiology 3s. I don't shill for them, I don't get paid by them, but I just think they're terrific stethoscopes. Definitely the most commonly used quality stethoscope that you'll see. You can get cheaper, you can get more expensive as I've said, but I think for the money and the performance it's a terrific scope. So I have here uh, my dad's Littman Cardiology 3. He was a physician, he passed away a couple years ago. So one of the ways I stay connected with him uh, it's kind of a cool thing. I get to use his stethoscope. And this has seen a lot of patients uh, with me and many, many, many more with my dad. So that's that's a nice little side point. So anyway, first thing you're going to need to do if the diaphragm is still on there, and usually it will be, is remove it. And I've sort of started to remove this one because once you get a, get a new uh, ring on, they're a little difficult. Um, all you do, you kind of get your fingernail under this edge here, and eventually you work it off. And it just peels right off. You kind of go around, all the way around. So this is the rim assembly. And then this is the diaphragm. And this is made of a fiberglass and epoxy mix. So it's very durable, but very thin. And then around it is a silicone rubber seal. And that's very flexible that allows the diaphragm to move up and down. So to replace it, what you're going to do, you're going to go to a medical supply store that sells stethoscopes, or you can call the Littman Company or go to their website. Um, there are a number of uh, stethoscope suppliers that you can get this from. I got this at the UC Davis Med Center bookstore. They have all kinds of supplies. And you're going to get a packet like this. This is a Littman Cardiology 3. It's specific to this stethoscope. You need to make sure and get the one specific to the stethoscope you have. And this is the Cardiology 3. It's called a tunable diaphragm and a rim assembly. And it comes with instructions. And inside there, you'll find a diaphragm and a rim assembly. Now, really quickly, a, a quick side light. Uh, the reason they call this a tunable diaphragm is either side can be used to listen to both high and low frequency sounds. And the way you do that, and, and Littman kind of invented this, um, I think it was 10 or 15 years ago, you can push gently with the diaphragm and hear the low pitch sounds, uh, good for hearing things like mitral stenosis of the heart. Um, and then if you press more firmly against the skin, you only get the high sounds. So you might ask yourself, why would you have uh, a large and small diaphragm if you can hear both sounds? Most people with a diaphragm use this side for pediatric patients. Um, they're just smaller. You need a smaller stethoscope on there so you get a more localized sense for the sound. Now, you should also know, and Littman instructions will tell you this, you can use this instead of a, a diaphragm like most people have, you can use this as a bell, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So, after you remove the diaphragm and the rim assembly, you want to wash this very gently with soap and a mild, uh, mild soap and water. And I kind of use a scrub brush to, to scrape any grime out of here, scrub any grime out of this edge. So you get really good contact with your diaphragm. That'll improve the quality of sound. Next thing you do, you grab a little bit, not much, of talcum powder. And it's just a dry lubricant. You're going to put a little bit around the edge. You don't need a lot. It's just enough to dry the edge out so that when you put that rim assembly on to hold the diaphragm in place, it won't stick. And because you kind of have to stretch the ring to get it over this edge, if it were to stick to this, it could tear. So you put a little bit of this on so that it'll slip on. Put it on both sides. And then the last thing you want to do is make sure there's no, no talcum powder in the middle because if it gets in this hole, 
it'll go in the tube and it will interfere with the sound. So I'm just going to wipe that extra out with my finger. Give it a little quick blow off there. And we're ready to put the diaphragm on. So now all you do is you grab the diaphragm and uh, it only goes in one direction. You want to do it, uh, most diaphragms will have a, a logo on there and you want to make sure the logo reads properly once you put it on. If it reads backwards, you know you got the diaphragm backwards. So this being a Littmann Cardiology 3, you're going to look for that L and place it so the L is oriented the right way. You're going to center it and then hold it there and then get this ring. And it doesn't matter which way you put the ring, it's, it's uh, symmetrical on both sides. So what they tell you to do is put the ring over an edge anywhere on there and hold it with your thumb and then hold it with your other thumb and then you're going to take your thumbs oops, get it aligned properly you're going to take your thumbs and run them around the outside edge like this and at the end the hard part is stretching it over the, the distant edge and you're not going to break it generally these things are pretty tough if you want to be a little careful not to break the diaphragm because it is kind of sensitive and as you push these edges around eventually it'll kind of pop into place where it goes and then you just have a little adjusting you can see right now it's on there but it's not oriented it's, it's a little bit twisted so you just spend a little time kind of working it with your fingers to get it in the little groove where it's supposed to be it always works great off camera and then I get on camera and it's giving me trouble but so anyway I'll do a little more of that work after I get off camera and then on this side Instead of doing the diaphragm, I'm going to experiment with a bell. I haven't used a bell day-to-day uh, -day with my patients. I thought it would be kind of fun. So all you do to use the bell is instead of putting on the diaphragm, and this is a separate kit. You have a small diaphragm kit and a large diaphragm kit. They're about, uh, I think I paid $7.50 for them each. So for $15, you can get new diaphragms for your stethoscope. Um, so all you do to use the bell is you just put the ring on without the diaphragm, and that's even easier. Do the same thing. Two thumbs kind of work it around and that one just snapped right into place and now you have a bell and the purpose of this one it grips a little better but the main thing is it doesn't get cold on the patient's skin because it's plastic this is a, a machined steel chest piece and it can get pretty darn cold so there you have it you have a new diaphragm and a new bell and it will bring new life to your stethoscope if you're interested in any more videos how to know when you need repairs how to clean the tube how to clean the ear tips, uh, how to use the stethoscope, uh, what else? And I also have a video on how they work. Please visit us at the blog. It's my PI, mypatraining.com, which is the URL for Inside PA Training. You can also go to InsidePATraining.com and uh, click on Stethoscope. There's a link toward the top of the page, and you'll find a number of videos and articles about stethoscopes. Hope it's helpful, and I look forward to seeing you on the blog or on our next video. Take care.